Hey everyone, I'm Matthias, engineering lead for our AI Edge team, which includes tooling, infrastructure, and applied ML. I'm super excited to share some of our latest advances in bringing language models to mobile and the web. This is a rapidly evolving space, and we have some great content for you today. While our focus will be on language models, most of these improvements are also generally applicable for traditional edge models. As you're listening to this talk, you're likely already convinced and excited about the benefits of this technology. But just to level set, let's briefly review them together. Customers often rely on apps where real-time, low-latency processing is absolutely critical. For example, when removing the background in every frame of a video conference stream. Offline use is also highly valuable, enabling users to set timers or reminders via voice without network connectivity. Running ML on the edge also offers clear privacy advantages, such as denoising voice messages without the user's data ever leaving the device. And as a developer, you reduce or eliminate the need to deal with server-side maintenance, capacity constraints, or inference costs. When running AI on the edge, Google AI Edge provides all the necessary tools. You can select the right tool for your application, whether that is a high-level API for common tasks like image segmentation, or interface directly with our runtime for implementing custom and complex AI features. Hundreds of thousands of developers rely on Google AI Edge every day, including nearly all of Google's major mobile applications and products. We're excited to dive into what we've been working on lately, so let's jump right in. Last year, we launched our LLM Inference API, providing developers with a simple prompt-in, response-out API to run many popular small language models directly on the Edge. It offers full cross-platform support including web, iOS, and Android, with leading industry performance. Next, let's have a look at our recent advances. First, we continue to expand support for many more models. We recently launched our LiDAR-T community on Hugging Face, teaming up with members of the community to convert and share models ready to be used out of the box on the edge. We're particularly excited to support the most recent DeepSeq and Gemma models. Check out the LiDAR-T Hugging Face community to explore our supported models and even contribute your own. Now, to discuss customizing your own models, I'll hand it over to my colleague Mark. Thanks, Matthias. Our progress on edge language models has been truly awesome. Let's dive into how to even better customize these models. On our LiDAR-T Hugging Face community, you can find model assets that have been converted and are ready to run immediately on the edge. However, if you want to customize these models yourself before running them on the edge, you need to start with an edge-optimized Python implementation of the model that you want to customize. For many popular models, we've made these for you, and you can find them in our Google AI Edge GitHub. These Python implementations are ready to be paired with model weights, either the original weights from the model or your fine-tuned weights. Then you convert them to an edge model format that can be run on device. So how do you actually fine-tune one of these models? Well, there are lots of different community-provided tools, such as TorchTune or Hugging Face Transformers. With these tools, you take your own data, you run either a lower fine-tune or a full fine-tune on top of the pre-trained weights, and then you convert the model to an edge model to be run on device. It's really straightforward, and we have a great collab published, which uses Hugging Face Transformers and Google AI Edge to run through every step you'll need to process from fine-tuning to on-device model inference. And after you've fine-tuned, or when you've converted a custom model to an edge format, you'll want to quantize it with AI Edge Quantizer. Quantization is a method to reduce the precision of each model weight from 32-bit floating point, or FP32, to a smaller floating point or integer data type. Reducing the precision of a model's weight reduces the size of a model on disk, in memory, and it often improves model latency. We're really excited for AI Edge Quantizer to now support int4 post-training quantization allowing you to take a traditional FP32 model and reduce its size by eight times, making it run significantly faster, often for a minimal quality loss. With our new INT4 post-training quantization schemes optimized for language models, you can convert your INT4 weights with just a few lines of code. Now, everything discussed so far has been around customization through weights or quantization. 
If you want to make architectural changes to a model, or even bring a net new language model to the edge, you can use our AI Edge Torch Generative API. With the AI Edge Torch Generative API, you build the language model architecture using a combination of PyTorch native layers and AI Edge Torch layers optimized for edge inference. Then you attach the model weights and convert it to run with LightRT. Now, last but not least, everything we've shown you today needs to be inspectable and testable so that you can debug when you hit issues and sleep at night, knowing that your end users experience the same results and performance that you do when you test during development. For inspectability, we have Model Explorer. Model Explorer is our graph visualization tool that lets you visualize your language models, or really any ML model, visually and intuitively. With hierarchical views, you can internalize a structure of even billion parameter models. You can display a single model, or even two variants of the same model, side by side. Inspect the same model with different quantization schemes, or potentially with a slight architectural tweak, and drill down into the differences. Model Explorer was released last year and has already seen 100,000 downloads and growing. For testability, we have AI Edge Portal. While most of our APIs and SDKs have Python versions to test in, on notebooks or on desktops, running on servers or desktops will not always give the same result as running on an actual end device. And even if you do test on a real device, or maybe a few you have in the office, results vary across the hundred of devices that your users will have in production. To ease this testing pain, we've created AI Edge Portal, a new GCP service that takes your LiDAR team models and runs them across many real devices in our device lab, all with just a few clicks. You can run benchmarks, bulk inference, and even evals, all running on a large collection of devices, mirroring what you will really see in production. AI Edge Portal is currently in private preview, so please reach out if you would like access ahead of our general availability release. Between our broad language model support and high degree of customization, we are confident that you can get the right language model running on mobile and web that fits your needs. But as we've worked with a lot of developers over the last year to build impactful features on top of language models on the edge, we've heard time and time again that there are additional tools they need to deliver these AI features. As we've built these tools for Google Teams and seen their utility, we are really excited to make them available to you as well. Today we'll talk about two of these, on-device retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, and on-device tool calling. First, Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. Small language models are great for natural language understanding, but often they don't have the specific knowledge to answer a given query. Rather than try and fine tune them with the knowledge, you can feed that knowledge to the model during inference time. Parsing, storing, and then retrieving the right information at inference time together makes up Retrieval Augmented Generation. User queries are fed into the RAG SDK, which can retrieve data from your storage and feed the response to the small language model. This is particularly useful when you have lots of information to query against, often hundreds if not thousands of pages or sources. Google AI Edge's RAG SDK enables this behavior for you. It works right out of the box. It includes an on-device embedding model, chunking method, vector database, and retrieval function. It's also modular, so you can replace any or all of these parts with your own preferred ones. Our RAG SDK is available on Android today and will support iOS and web later this year. Second, we have function calling also commonly called tool use. Oftentimes when building features, you don't simply want the language model to return text, but you want it to take an actual action. That action is generally executing an API that then programmatically does something else. We are excited for the launch of our Google AI Edge function calling SDK. This SDK lets you register your functions from your application to be used with your language model. You can use it out of the box, simply registering your functions on device with the SDK and using a base model, or if you need better accuracy or for more robust scenarios, you can customize your model. In Python, register your application functions and provide a base model. Our SDK will use synthetic data generation and then fine tune your base model for your specific functions. Take this new customized model and run it on device with our SDK to greatly expand the capabilities of function calling on the edge. Try it out yourself and give us feedback. This is a newly released SDK and like our RAG SDK, is available on Android with iOS and web versions coming later. Great. Before we move on, a quick recap of our video so far. We've covered our wide and growing support of small language models on mobile and web, your options to bring new models or customize existing models using quantization and fine tuning, and our RAG and function calling SDKs, which act as force multipliers to edge language models, enabling even more powerful AI capabilities. Now, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Mogan.
Thanks, Mark. And hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here to talk about our infrastructure improvements. Over the last few years, we've heard your feedback that while TF Lite offered you tremendous advantages, that it can be difficult and sometimes confusing to use. We had to refer to documentation, blogs, and look up tips and tricks to leverage its advantages. With LightRT, we're taking steps to improve this and improve the developer experience. As many of you know, GPUs have always been at the center of Google AI Edge acceleration. So as a key example, we want to make it easier for everyone to take advantage of them. Our entire runtime stack is designed to be GPU first compared to many other Edge runtimes. GPUs are the most accessible and prevalent method of acceleration, realizing significant performance increases over just CPUs. In the past, these are all steps that were required to take advantage of GPU acceleration. You first had to load the model, create the flat buffer objects, create the resolver and the interpreter, then create and initialize the GPU delegate, configure it, and analyze the model for supported ops. You needed to remember to do all of this and hope you didn't forget a step and troubleshoot it if any steps were missed. This was cumbersome and tedious, so we're taking this opportunity to simplify this process. Now with LightRT, we just require two steps. Specify and load the model, compile the model, and specify the backend you'd like to target as an option. And that's it. In this example, you can write up to 80% less code while getting maximum performance. Not only are we making GPUs easier to use, we also wanted to take this opportunity to share an exciting update to our GPU acceleration. With the era of Gen AI, we've re-architected our GPU delegate as ML Drift for even better performance overall compared to previous versions, and to better support the unique requirements of running Gen AI models. For small language models on device, you can see a 12x improvement compared to other inference frameworks. That's right, a 12x improvement compared to GPU-enabled frameworks. So again, we wanted to encourage everybody to explore leveraging LightRT's GPU acceleration with our latest changes, making it easier than ever. More details on changes under the hood will be available in the documentation, along with how to incorporate ML Drift today. As we push the boundaries of performance, we also wanted to make it equally as simple to take advantage of MPUs, a specialized silicon becoming more prevalent for running AI in flagship phones. AI models are becoming larger and more complex, especially in the generative space. And MPUs will not only provide an advantage, but will become a necessity for giving users a responsive experience on mobile. Leveraging MPUs to run models locally also means a more private experience for users and cost-effective solution for uh, developers, so you don't need to manage cloud compute costs. Here, you can see we make it almost as simple to leverage MPUs with the same lines to load and then compile the model, specifying the additional MPU backend with fallback to GPU and CPU. All you need to do is configure a few additional resources unique to MPUs, like the compiler. To make the speed tangible, we've observed a 25x performance compared to CPUs, and at least a eight times improvement versus GPUs in our internal testing using LightRT. When available, NPUs provide not only a better performance with a meaningful reduction in latency, but also typically a reduction in processor, memory, and power utilization, resulting in resource savings. This allows the device to run longer with improved thermals and overall system health. This applies to both classical models as well as Gen AI models, so you don't need to be in the Gen AI space to realize the advantages of NPUs, and your users will be happier for it. In this space, we're partnering closely with Qualcomm and MediaTek to offer a streamlined developer experience. While each vendor does have their own tool chains, LightRT unifies the experience by creating an environment, as you saw in the code sample, to unify compilation and distribution of the binaries for these vendors. We'll be adding support for more vendors in the coming months. MediaTek and Qualcomm integrations are available today with more documentation on our website. When the models are compiled for each vendor, separate binaries are saved in directories for each target and bundled into new AI packs that we've developed in cooperation with Google Play Store. This allows us to configure the correct model distribution for supported devices in addition to any necessary runtimes or dependencies. 
Again, for more information and documentation, head on over to Google slash AI dash edge. To highlight some real examples, we'd like to share about the work from three of our early access partners. The first is Ensign Info Security, a Singapore-based cybersecurity firm battling the problem of deepfakes. Video authentication has become popular as a reliable means of verifying a user's identity, transaction, and intent. With the advent of incredibly sophisticated generative and deepfake technologies, this has become less reliable. It's imperative to run detection models on device in real time so you know the person you're talking to is real. By quantizing their models using LiDAR-T tools, leveraging LiDAR-T CPU and GPU delegates, Ensign was able to reduce detection time from 67 seconds to 1.2 seconds, all while reducing heat and processing, memory and power consumption to make deepfake detection accessible for banks and individuals alike. The second is ArgMax. They are building enterprise-grade on-device inference SDKs, such as WhisperKit for speech to text and SpeakerKit for speaker identification. ArgMax switched from ExecuTorch to LiDAR-T and also migrated from our older GPU delegate to ML Drift and immediately realized a 30% performance improvement, while also benefiting from cross-platform support and looking to expand for MPUs through LiDAR-T. Finally, we have AudioShake. AudioShake makes audio more useful for both humans and machines by separating sound into component parts. From enabling remixing in DJ applications and removing music or crowd noise on the fly, to separating multiple voices from a crowd, AudioShake benefits from cross-platform support without sacrificing performance, allowing them to focus on training the best possible models for their users. LiDAR-T's performance enables real-time use cases, which weren't possible previously with a small team. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we're hoping you're as excited about the future of on-device AI as we are. You can find documentation and more information about everything we talked about today at Google slash AI dash edge. As always, if you're building interesting products on the edge, we encourage you to reach out and contact the team. We would love to hear about it.